Got a wheel? Want a race? We've got you. The driving sims are coming. Racing with a gamepad can be great fun, but no one wants the sim racing police to bust down their door and take them away to spend a night in the cells. If you're serious about virtual vehicular control, you need a force feedback wheel, like the Logitech G29 we use in the office when a new sim pops up. With that setup, racing sims come alive and let you in on subtle handling details you missed before with a pad. Like the way cars wrestle against you under braking and squirm for traction on a corner exit. In short, it feels like driving a car more than it feels like playing a game. So which sims deserve your time, effort and ultimately your money? We've been searching for the answers to those questions since PC games came in giant cardboard boxes and had to be retrieved from actual shops on the high street. And we've assembled a grid full of elite racing sims for your consideration. Stick it in neutral and do a quick mirror check while we introduce you to the best racing games to play with a wheel. Dirt Rally 2 is everything you'd want a rally sim to be. Really hard, almost always raining, and incredibly meaty to control with a wheel. There are vintage rally cars to perv over, an entire licensed rallycross championship to contend with, and above all, absolutely peerless vehicle physics. The force feedback from Codemasters here is top-notch, conveying the weight of your car perfectly as you fling it this way and that through muddy tracks and dangerously narrow bridges that someone evidently thought it would be a good idea to plot a rally through. Thanks for that. That feeling of weight is incredibly important in a rally game because to be effective at high speed, you're constantly counter-steering to keep the rear end at the edge of traction, and a force feedback wheel like the trusty G920 or G29 articulates that edge better than anything. Right. If you're looking for that rarest of racing sims, the master of all disciplines, Jack of None, Project Cars 2 is your crazy fever dream made glorious reality. Somehow, slightly mad studios have made IndyCar, Rallycross, Hypercar Racing, and chucking a street legal hatchback up Eau Rouge all feel utterly convincing in the same game. And look, it's great to play with a pad and a few assists on, but it's only when you plug in a good wheel and go full simulation that you notice just how detailed each car's behaviour is. You can somehow feel the slipstream when you follow behind another indie car at high speed. Your hands tell you how light and responsive a race-tuned car is versus its road-going equivalent, and flooring it in a hypercar is a frankly upsetting experience. What's more, there's a serious multiplayer scene built around the game, so your skills behind the wheel might ultimately lead you to eSports fame and fortune. The line between real motorsport and racing sims blurs with every passing year, and Project Cars 2 is right up there to bridge the gap. Everyone's dreamed of being a Formula 1 driver at some point, haven't they? It's such a glamorous life after all. Travelling across the globe to race the quickest cars in existence, being paid lorry loads of cash and having the media hang on your every word. What F1 2018 attempts to do is let you into that life, warts and all. The glamour and excitement's there, sure, but so is shaking your angry fist at sporting legends as they shatter your front wing, and presumably having a baseball cap permanently seared onto your scalp. It's an amazing take on the traditional racing game career mode, reveling in details like contract negotiations and press interviews, but above all else, it feels amazing to drive. It's probably the most accessible game in this video, but that certainly doesn't mean it's a breeze to edge past Max the Crash Verstappen with all the assists off and the force feedback rumbling, or indeed to whack in lap after lap on rapidly degrading wet tyres with Lewis Hamilton breathing down your neck. The focus is on things like managing your rubber and fuel levels rather than the minutiae of car behaviour, but it's still best experienced through a good wheel and some authentic flappy paddles for the gear changes. And they're out in force again today. If we're being totally honest, the Blancpain World Endurance Series license is a bit of a niche one, but there it is at the heart of Assetto Corsa Competizione all the same. And here we are grinning wildly while we play it. This is the sharp end of racing simulation, where every corner requires a deft touch on the wheel and the graceful footwork of a ballet dancer on the pedals. The feeling of vibration from the track and weight distribution through your wheel is best in class, and that makes us suddenly care quite a lot about the exploits of Andrew Watson, Jesse Crone and Gregory Teo as they race for glory. A quick word of warning though, at the time we're making this video, the game is still in early access and so some content still to come. That doesn't put us off in the least though. The core bits and bobs are already rock solid, which is what counts in a racing sim. Here's an indication of how seriously iRacing takes its, well, racing. 
A racing wheel is mandatory. No wheel, no iRacing, friend. And it doesn't end there. You're also expected to behave like a professional behind the racing wheel, avoiding collisions wherever possible like a real fleshy mortal driver would, and observing flag rules whenever you see them. This strong stance on, let's face it, not being a total jerk, has fostered a dedicated and talented iRacing community. Graphically, it can't quite compete with newer releases like the achingly well-realized Dirt Rally 2 or Project Cars 2's impossible shininess, but the handling is exact and meticulously detailed. That's true across its 18 licensed cars in which you compete against other human folk in regularly scheduled series events, just like a real race driver then. Except real race drivers probably don't do this too many times and live to tell the tale. ISI's take on serious racing sims isn't the easiest on the eye these days. Truth be told, neither was the first R Factor when it came out in 2005. But what it lacks in bleeding edge visual finesse, it sweetens the deal with in terms of raw handling simulation and modability. While you immediately alt tab to ascertain whether modability is actually a word, let us tell you about the breadth of experiences within this humble package. F1 seasons from yesteryear to present day, check. Clio Cup, check. Oval racing, yeah, check. The infamous Group C Le Mans car category, you bet. And all of them treat your wheel totally differently, because their creators have nigh infinite tinkering ability with the physics and force feedback settings within the game. You might consider it a bit of a waste to go to the trouble of setting up a wheel like the G920 or G29, calibrating your force feedback settings and getting your pedals just where you need them under your desk, just to trundle around stretches of American highway at well under the speed limit. How wrong you'd be. American Truck Sim has surprisingly good wheel implementation, treating your hands to a sturdy road rumble and actually making use of that 900 degree rotation most racing reels have. Driving feels satisfyingly heavy and there's a bizarre intrinsic joy in performing those little tasks like flicking your indicator lights on and using your programmable buttons. Perhaps best of all, taking on American Truck Sim with a wheel unlocks the absolute hardest undertaking in sim racing reverse bay parking and articulated lorry. Seriously, how do people do this every day? Back when they used to be known as Simbin, Swedish developers Sector 3 Studios were pretty much out on their own in the early 2000s, developing the unfathomably realistic GTR sims. Anyone who troubled the sand traps of those games will recognize the sim racing now in Race Room, a free-to-play title where you pay for the cars and tracks you want to use. WTCC, DTM, GT Masters and the Audi TT Sport Cup are all available for those willing to shell out for them, but whatever car you strap yourself into, you're guaranteed of a totally convincing and ultra-competitive experience. Some people are put off by this free-to-play model, and initially it is a bit disheartening to see so many cars and tracks behind a paywall. But if you commit to just one particular series, there's plenty of depth to keep you going in there, plus the chance to really master the car rather than just sampling it and moving on. Like we've uh, obviously done here with this class. <clears throat> It's the oldest game on our list by quite a margin, but boy can Richard Burns Rally still cut it with the young whippersnappers on the grid. Back in 2004, it gained a reputation for its uncompromising approach to rally simulation, which of course is catnip to a certain breed of racing game player. Over the next 15 years, the community just kept updating the game and adding new content, ultimately making it one of the most complete rally games there's ever been. And okay, cards on the table, Dirt Rally 2 probably does have this, a game from 2004, licked for visuals. But the handling still feels uniquely convincing all these years later, and that deserves some evangelizing. All the way from Brazil, Automobilista brings serious simulation chops and great force feedback to the fray, and its journey to release date is quite an interesting one. Developers Razer cut their teeth on the Stock Car Sim series using ISI's R Factor 2 engine and earned a small but devoted fanbase along the way. Automobilista doesn't feature many glamorous racing licenses, but the fact you're racing stock cars and race spec minis doesn't detract from the enjoyment one bit. On the contrary, it actually makes you care quite a lot about stock cars and race spec minis because they're fantastically aggressive racing series. Whatever you want to race though, Automobilista kind of assumes you're using a decent racing wheel. Game pads just don't translate the impressive handling model quite as well. Watch out, yellow flag. With the virtual wind in our hair and our cheeks all flushed from the G-Force, we'll stick it in park and conclude this list of truly excellent driving sims to play with a wheel. Which are your favorites for a nice quiet drive and which sims would you definitely beat us at? 
Let us know in the comments below and we'll promise not to stay up for a week trying to beat your ghost. For more like this, smash that subscribe button and remember to turn on notifications so you never miss a video from us. Until next time, drive carefully and no corner cutting.